On our planet, climate change is normal and natural. But since the Industrial Revolution, levels of CO2 have been climbing higher and faster. They're now at the highest level they've been for four million years, and this is causing the world to heat up at a worrying speed. In the last 150 years, we've already seen the planet increase by one degree Celsius. Scientists and global bodies fear that if we don't take immediate action to ensure our world hits net zero CO2 emissions in time for 2050, warming could increase by more than two degrees, and the results of that could be catastrophic, causing severe heat waves, millions of deaths, and putting major coastal cities in danger. So what are the root causes of the climate crisis we're facing? and how can we stop it? Let's start with CO2. Along with other greenhouse gases like methane and nitrogen oxide, carbon dioxide warms up the planet by absorbing heat from the sun and dispersing it in the atmosphere. All these gases are crucial to our survival, but their levels in the atmosphere are now far too high. And this is mainly because of the amount of coal, oil and gas that we're burning. Not only is the Earth warming because of this, but there's also more energy in the atmosphere, which means there's a greater chance of dangerous freak weather events like storms. To work out what was happening and what we should do, the UN set up the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change in 1988. Each IPCC report is written by hundreds of leading scientists in the field. They've concluded quite clearly that if we want to stop temperatures rising, we need to stop pumping out so much CO2. And this means decarbonising our energy systems. We hear a lot about this, for example using more wind and solar energy, converting from petrol and diesel to battery powered cars, eating less meat and flying less. It sounds simple and in many areas the technology is growing rapidly. But scientists all over the world feel governments are not doing enough to incentivise change. Now, I'm not willing to do that. We have the cleanest water we've ever had. We have the cleanest air. You saw the reports come out recently. We have the cleanest air we've ever had. There are some industries like flying and shipping for which zero emissions are impossible. This means we will need to draw carbon out of the atmosphere to compensate, a process called negative emissions technology. Trees naturally take carbon dioxide out of the air, but we've got a very bad record when it comes to planting them and a far better record for chopping them down. Research shows that we are still losing an area of forest the size of the UK every year. Reversing this trend is essential. Other methods to reduce emissions are controversial and untested. One we keep hearing about is carbon capture and storage. That means burying carbon dioxide that we burn deep underground. The technology is still very expensive and nowhere near commercially available. Finally, there's geoengineering which basically means manually tampering with the planet's climate. Ideas include spraying sulphur into the stratosphere, using giant mirrors to reflect the sun's light, and encouraging algae to grow in the ocean. It might all seem quite bizarre, but the eccentric nature of these plans show how desperate the situation is. Not even the scientists working on these projects think they will work. At best, these technologies could buy us a bit of time. But at worst, they could be more dangerous than climate change itself. Welcome to the rebellion! Ultimately, we know the only way we can save the planet is by cutting emissions. And as we've seen from the rise of Extinction Rebellion and the school strikes, people are demanding change more than ever. It's just a question of whether those in power will act quickly enough.